JWST has been looking at more exoplanets, and one of the planets it's been peeping at is experiencing a massive sandstorm. No observation of an exoplanet has ever seen as many features as this new JWST one. So let's take a look at what they found. The planet is called VHS 1256b. It's about 40 light years away and it orbits two stars at once over an incredible 10,000 year cycle. It does this orbital dance at a distance that is four times larger than the Sun-Pluto distance, which is perfect for JWST, since it means the light it receives from the planet is very pure and it doesn't need to be disentangled from the starlight of its parents. It's also a relatively young planet and formed only about 150 million years ago. This means it is still very hot, turbulent and chaotic, and its atmosphere is still very much churning around and mixing an awful lot, with hot material rising and pushing colder material down during its 22 hour day. This results in the brightness of the planet changing dramatically during a day, and in fact it's the most variable planetary sized object currently known. The planet is about 19 times more massive than Jupiter, so it's way bigger than any planet in our solar system. It's either a planet known as a super Jupiter, or it could pass into the category of brown dwarf, which are otherwise known as failed stars, typically in the mass range of 13 to 80 Jupiter masses. We're not exactly sure exactly which one this one is just yet. Since it is on the lower end of that brown dwarf mass range though, it has a relatively low gravity for a brown dwarf, and hence its clouds remain high in the atmosphere, making them much easier for JWST to detect. High in the atmosphere where the clouds lie, it reaches a whopping 830 degrees Celsius. But it's the composition of the atmosphere, rather than its high temperature, that is so exciting. JWST used two of its spectrographs on board to break down the light it received from the planet into the individual wavelengths of light, and it counted how much of each wavelength it received. Plotting this data gives us the spectrum of the planet, which looks like this and specific shapes and features in the spectrum tell us about the existence of specific elements and molecules in the atmosphere. To learn more about how to break up light into these components and how spectra teaches us about an atmosphere, you can go check out this video I made all about it. I think it's a pretty fun one. For this exoplanet, VHS 1256b, we can see features that tell us about the presence of water, methane, carbon monoxide and silicates in the atmosphere. A silica is any molecule that's made up of silicon and oxygen atoms, and interestingly, it typically makes up sand. For example, silica dioxide makes up a lot of sand on Earth. On this plot, the highlighted regions of different colours show us the specific features in the spectrum that correspond to each element or molecule discovered. This is the highest number of components ever resolved in a planet's atmosphere outside of our solar system. There was also a hint of carbon dioxide too, but that feature wasn't quite strong enough to yet be called a firm detection. The speed of JWST at making the detections is the astonishing thing here. All of this can be detected by other telescopes, one at a time and pretty slowly, but all of this can be done in just a few hours with JWST, whereas it would take tens or hundreds of times longer with other telescopes. The distance of the planet from its stars meant that these spectra could easily be taken directly from the planet, without needing it to pass in front of one of the stars or anything like that. But sadly, the planet is still too small and far away to be imaged well by JWST. They haven't released an image of the planet yet, but if they did, it would just be a fuzzy blob. So any pictures I or anyone else shows you of this are all just artists' impressions. Within the clouds of silicates, JWST saw both small particles, similar to a particle of smoke, and larger particles, which are more comparable to hot but still tiny particles of sand. Further studies should better reveal the size and shape distributions of these particles to us, and hopefully they'll teach us much more about the weather on this planet. That weather is probably pretty unpleasant though, given the clouds made of sand, which sounds way worse than the water vapour clouds we tend to have here on Earth. Imagine walking through or being rained on by sandy clouds, it would be pretty unpleasant. However, there's still a lot left to learn about this planet, and of course the much wider universe too, and JWST is helping us make progress on lots of fronts. The data taken here will keep scientists busy for a long time, and as they study it more, they'll keep learning more about the composition, weather and dynamics of the planet.
This planet will continue to cool and settle down over the next few billion years, and one day it might even have some nicer, less sandy weather. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'd love to hear your thoughts on all of this in the comments below. Until next time, stay safe team. I'll see you soon. Bye!